This episode of Aaron is brought to you by HostGator. Today on Barrent, I count down my top five most hated comic book movies of all time. Yeah, that's right. I'm counting down the suck. Welcome to Barrent, where we love comics more than hipsters love cardigans. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. Now, before I kick this list off, there's two movies I want to get out of the way, and that's because they're so bad, I don't want to spend much time on them. And they are the 90s Captain America film, which was crap on top of crap, and the 90s Fantastic Four movie, which was a steaming pile of crap on top of fecal matter. Now that I got those off my chest, let's count down the crap. My number five pick is a movie I actually had high hopes for, being that he's one of my top five favorite superheroes, and that would be The Green Lantern starring Ryan Reynolds. In the very first episode of Varian, I said this movie was more like rape than an actual film, and I couldn't agree with myself more. This was basically everything I wouldn't want in a Green Lantern film, and to me it was more like The Green Lantern visits Gossip Girl, and you only saw Sinistro for like five minutes in the entire movie, when he should have had a big part in the movie, especially since this was the origin story. I also hated the fact that the Green Lantern costume was all CGI. There was no need for it, and it would have been way cooler, a lot cheaper, and looked a lot better if he was actually wearing a real costume, especially the mask. It looked just ridiculous on his face. I also thought the Green Lantern's constructs, constructs meaning anything he makes with his ring, wasn't nearly as cool as they could have been. For instance, a Hot Wheel car on track to save somebody? Really? Really, Green Lantern? Really? My only hopes is that they reboot this franchise and do it the right way, kind of like what they did with the Hulk. And hopefully next time they don't waste 200 plus million. Number four is Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage. First off, I don't get what Hollywood's obsession is with having Nicolas Cage play superheroes, because before this, he was the main choice for Superman in Tim Burton and Kevin Smith's Superman Lives movie that ended up never happening, and man am I happy it didn't. Though, he was pretty awesome as Big Daddy. Hmm, forgot about that. But can you really see this guy playing Superman? Yeah, me either. Ghost Rider, however, was horrible and it's beyond me that this movie even got a sequel. They made Ghost Rider's motorcycle look all sculled out and something out of like a Hot Topic or Gothic nightclub, when it's supposed to be all blacked out and cool looking. Some of the special effects were pretty good, I'll give them that, but the acting and story was terrible. And the way they approached Blackheart was really awful, especially how they made him look. Why can't Hollywood stick to the source material? He looks awesome in the comics and more like a character from Twilight in the film. I would actually like to see a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider movie. For those of you who don't know, Danny Ketch was the third guy to become Ghost Rider in the comics and is my favorite version of Ghost Rider. But to sum this up, the plot sucked, the acting sucked, and Blackheart looked like a character out of Twilight. I kinda hated this movie. Third on my list of suck is Daredevil. The only thing I thought was kind of cool was his costume, but besides that, the movie was a complete and utter debacle. And trust me, I wish this movie was good because I'm a fan of Daredevil. But I mean, even the music in this movie was something out of like a 90s TV show. It felt like someone accidentally swapped the score for like Full House. And Ben Affleck was a horrible Daredevil, and likewise, Jennifer Garner was a horrible Elektra. It was quite comical seeing them fighting each other in the park. There's nothing more awkward to watch than two known stars trying to be cool and failing miserably. I mean, I really wonder what goes through the mind of the director and people filming because they're obviously watching on the monitors and they have to see the footage later, so that means they literally looked at the footage multiple times and were still like, yeah, you know what? That was great. Let's use that. Also, looking at Colin Farrell's portrayal as Bullseye just made me want to punch myself in the face until I have partial memory loss and completely forget I got eye raped in that fashion. He looked nothing like Bullseye. I mean, they didn't even attempt to kind of make him look like the character from the comics. All they did was slap the Bullseye on his forehead and then ask him to overact every second he's on screen. Again, the acting, the plot, the fight scenes, the casting, pretty much everything about this enema of a cinematic experience was terrible. And my number two pick is Batman and Robin starring George Bobblehead Clooney as Batman. I don't even know where to begin with this pile of dog vomit. I'd rather be stuck in a cage with an angry velociraptor than ever watch this movie again. The cast was just terrible and the way Arnold Schwarzenegger played Mr. Freeze was just embarrassing. And the same for Uma Thurman playing Poison Ivy, but that's not even the worst of it, my friends. Bane is actually the worst villain in this movie. They took Bane, who's one of Batman's most formidable villains, and made him a green mindless gimp monster thing. But hopefully Nolan will redeem the character in The Dark Knight Rises. One of the most famous debacles that came from this movie is the rubber nipples on the bat suit. Why would you ever give a character who's supposed to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies nipples on his costume? Is this to let you know that Batman's cold when he's fighting crime? Everything was bad, from Gotham having neon paint everywhere to the sound effects being straight out of cartoons. And the dreadful dialogue like Mr. Freeze saying, have an ice day, or how about everybody chill? Clever, right? Now I can go on and on on how they took probably one of my favorite superheroes and made him into one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But I'm just going to leave it at this. The movie was so bad the director of the film, Joel Schumacher, actually apologized for making it. No lie. And I think that basically sums it up right there. But now before I give you my buy list and my number one pick, I want to thank our sponsor. 
HostGator can get your blog or website up and running in minutes with plans starting at just $3.96 a month. You can get 24-7 support and access to website building tools with over 4,000 templates. They'll even migrate your current site for free and servers are 130% powered by wind energy. For Revision 3 viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month for free. Just go to HostGator.com and enter the code VariantRev3 at checkout. First on my buy list for Wednesday, June 27th, we have Aquaman issue 10. Jeff Johns is a beast of a man, which he's been proving by making one of the superheroes people love to make fun of really cool. Next we have Before Watchmen Night Owl issue 1. This title is being drawn by my second favorite artist, Andy Kubert, so I'm super excited to see him draw Night Owl. And here we have The Dark Knight issue 10. In this issue, Batman faces the deadliest version of the Scarecrow he has ever faced and David Finch's art is just ridiculous. Now we have the new Deadwardians issue four. I know you're probably thinking another zombie comic heiress, but this one is different. The series is about Victorian England and all the upper class have willingly become vampires to escape the lower class of zombies. And a lonely detective is caught in the middle. And next we have American Vampire issue 28. Now, like I said in an earlier episode, I wanted to catch myself up with this and I'm glad I did. This book has excellent slaps all over it. And that's not shocking being that it's written by Scott Snyder, who's also writing Batman and doing an exceptional job at that. Finally, we have Justice League issue 10. Now this title has been nothing less than amazing and in this issue the identity of Justice League's newest villain is revealed. For my number one most loathed vile attempt at a comic book movie ever is Catwoman starring Halle Berry. I really don't even know what to say about this movie. I mean it was just so bad. The acting, the music, the costume, everything was just bad. It gives me a headache just thinking about it because it was so dang bad. I like Catwoman and all, but why the heck would they give her own movie? We haven't even gotten a Flash movie yet, so call me crazy. I think Flash deserves his own movie before Catwoman does. Especially since this Catwoman has nothing to do with Batman. Oh, did I forget to mention that? Well, it doesn't. Like at all. It doesn't take place in Gotham, Batman is never referenced or mentioned, Catwoman's name isn't even Selina Kyle. Now DC Comics obviously gave the green light for this and had some part in it, so it's technically Catwoman, just not Batman's Catwoman. I honestly have no clue. And I don't even know what they were trying to do with this film. It's like the movie was supposed to be a comedy because the only way I can believe a movie being this bad is if it was done on purpose. For instance, look at this. You saved my life, Midnight. But somebody killed me. And I've got to find out who and why. Or this. You boys thought you could come in here and steal all these beautiful things? What a perfect idea. I know. I know, man. And whoever wrote this movie should never be allowed to use a pen, a pencil, a marker, or any other sort of writing utensil for that matter, because apparently you can't be trusted with them. The costume? Well, just look at it. Looks like an SM gothic nightmare. The whole movie was a cinematic punch in the manberries and a big middle finger to comic book fans. It was just bad. Like, really bad. Like, I'm still ranting about it even though I'm done talking about it bad. It was just so terrible. Alright. I'm done talking about it. I'm done. It was so bad. Well, that's it for today on Variant, but I know there are a whole lot of other comic book movies that are the equivalent of getting really bad diarrhea and the closest bathroom being 20 miles away. But I couldn't mention them all, so post them in our comment section below or on our Variant Facebook page. You can also tweet to me at twitter.com forward slash Eris underscore Quinones. I am always down to chat, so don't be shy. But that's it for today, and I will see you next week when I talk about my essential three Spider-Man comic books of all time. Yeah. Get it? Get it? Heavy metal? Because the suit is made of iron? So it's heavy metal. I get it. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -na 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 -na